Hello everyone, another update, this is update number 6 of the engine and I almost forgot to record this one. Um, I, I was like very concentrated adding stuff to this, so you can see there really have a bunch of new stuff. And this is a spoiler of what I'm working next, yes I'm working on time, tile maps, but I've tried to not spoil this time because I always ended up spoiling the next video on the current one, so stay tuned for the next one, but in this video as you can see, uh, I have something that seems very simple, but it's actually not this new split image and uh, some small additions like a map YouTube's stuff, very simple stuff uh, and some refactoring. But what is this split image? Let me show you. So as you probably saw, it is related to the tile map, but the tile map itself is not the subject of this video. What is subject is, when you have an image like that, this is an image from Kenny, and you can see it is a single image that contains a lot of tiles. So let me try to draw here. Uh, I believe this is a tile, and then this is another tile, and another, and another. You know how this works, right? I don't need to explain that, but um, this is good for storage and it's good for the artist, like the 3D artist, to create the assets like that because it's very handy to have them uh, side by side. As you can see here, I have a bunch of characters and each character like that is a tile, right? So we can see here that I have a bunch of tiles. Anyways, but for us, when, we, when it comes to handling, this is not exactly ideal. I mean, it is good to have everything in a single texture, but sometimes you want to split into different textures, even if it's just for a moment in order to rearrange this texture as you wish a little bit better. So it's important to have an option to split this. So this is exactly this, what the method, the image method split image is for. So given an image like this one, I can say, hey, split this into um, 11 rows and 11 columns. I believe this one have uh, 12 columns. So you can see uh, if, you, if you count here, it does have like one, two, three, I'm not gonna count until the end, but it does have 12 columns and 11 rows, right? So let's say that I wanna split this into 12 by 11. Well, now I can do this. It's actually very simple. Let me show you what I've been working on. Uh, I have here the tile map. So this is me loading the tile map. And then I can call split image into again 12 uh, columns and 11 rows. I'm not calling this columns and rows because my brain makes a huge confusion when it comes to naming and I have this problem. So I'm calling this uh, number X and number uh, Y as you can see because it's easier for me at least to associate like X with this axis and then y with this. So num x is the number of cuts in the x-axis and so on. So, but this is, this is pretty much like num x is the columns and num y is the rows. So if your brain works a little bit better than mine, you can call this column and row, but for me, this is easier. So I can just get the image and split the image and it will return for me a vector. So you can see this is a SED vector of images. So let me just uh, type here for clearance. So it gets a little bit more clear. Uh, you can see that it is returning a bunch of image. So it is creating this image, copying the data and then submitting the data. And then I can later on simply get the tile and I'm using this map to array but what I'm, what I'm basically doing here, if you don't know how the math works, uh, because this is like an array, one dimensional array, but I want to access this with the two dimensionals because for, in this case, I'm on, I want the sprite that is in this, in the second uh, column and ninth uh, row. See, I'm already confusing the, them. And of course, programming starts at zero, so it's one less. But in order to get this, I need to do 8 times 12, which is the amount of um, columns that it have, plus 1, right? So this is the math, and sometimes I find this a little bit confusing as well, because again, my brain is different. So I just created this math, map to array, 
that is a very lazy function that does exactly that. But now we know x, y in the array width, and I have the other way around too. So a very simple thing. And then if I run this, you can see that I have this warrior. Again, still no aspect ratio, so this is why it is stretched. But again, this is not a problem. But what is good is that you can see that I have a single um, character here. And if I want to have like the first one, zero, the other character, you can see that I have it. And if I want to have like the two, I can have it too. They are very similar, right? Let me just try the tree. I believe it will be similar to. No, it's a, it's a girl now. Great. Yay. I leave her. She's best. She's better. Anyways, um, so this is the math. And for you, just in case you're curious about how this split image works, it is very simple actually. Uh, I do some assertions here just to make sure that I'm not passing a negative number here because it does not make sense and i cannot uh, split this into more pixels uh, into more separate images separate image than you have pixels so i am doing another assertion here so this is the output i'm calculating here the size of the output based on the number of splits so this is the math that i'm doing here and here i'm pretty much uh iterating over um this i'm iterating over the the number of elements the number of textures and for every single texture i'm creating it and then i'm copying everything you can see that this is not very efficient i i could use some memory copy here to copy the entire line of pixels this would be way faster than doing this uh, pixel by pixel but for the sake of simplicity i'm leaving like that but in other case here i did add it not for this update but for the other one uh, an append um, function here in the image and you can see that it appends an image into another in this position and in this append I'm actually doing this so this is the proper way to do this I'm mem copying the entire uh, line of pixels instead of going one by one and copying that because this will save a lot of processing power a lot of G uh, CPU cycles and it will hopefully make your your software better so there's room for optimization here what i did let me go back here um it is here so there is room for optimization in this particular part of the of the function specifically in the individual as i said line copies of this image i cannot copy the entire image because it is not a uh, contiguous memory space because you can um if you think about it uh when one line of the sub image ends, there's more stuff after that. So I cannot copy everything, but I can copy line by line. And uh, this should be very easy to do actually, because I'm already first iterating over the width. This is a good practice in, in anything. And then I can just do, let me try this F and F, wait 32. Uh, some people, Oh, I can type, right? By the way, why I'm using memcopy on Windows? Um, this one actually, memcopy underline S, it's because of like a vulnerability a security issue that memcopy have. I'm not going to talk about this in this video because it's not the subject, but uh, MSVC provides this uh, workaround. That is probably, I don't know, just an assertion or stuff like that, but I don't know. I like using this way. And then for the other platforms, I just do an else here and do regular mem copy. It will work just fine. And I'm already leaving this uh, cross platform because I do plan to export for Linux and M scripting and other platforms in the future. For now, of course, we only have Windows backends implemented. So it is a current limitation, but I do plan. You got it, right? Uh, let me get this straight. So this is the new image. So I can do image dot m pixels. And since this is a uh, an image editing an image, I can access private members of it. Then I I need to do the weird math, which is y times image uh, width, which is here already. So I'm just saving plus x. So this is basically the destination of my mem copy. Um, 
Let me actually do const size t called the size. It is um, alt width times the size of color. So this is the destination and the source will be the and pixels. This is the Y. And now I need to be a little bit more careful here in the source because it's the Y times the width. And the, this width is not the same of this one. Plus, and this is the X. And then, of course, I need to do copy size and get the address of this. It's a little bit huge. It's very huge, actually. Let me just put it right here. Oh, I don't need the X here. Yes, that's correct. Because I'm copying the entire line. So this should work. And then I can delete this. Let me see live if this works. And if it doesn't, I'll probably end the video here and fix. But you get the point. Oh, it did. Oh, sounds like I'm getting good at programming. <laughs> oh, good. So it worked here. And this was a small optimization. And this is actually good for you all to see how optimizations works. Uh, this was a very small one. Uh, it makes the code less readable, in my opinion. Because if you think about it, like what which one is better to to read this one or this one and i believe this one is best right uh something that i can do is like if the debug else and diff and then i can simply move this to the debug mode so if i'm on the bug mode it will do line by line because then if I have like a memory access violation, I can easily see. Otherwise not. Uh, I'm not a fan of this because uh, the routine here is different. So this means that it may have a bug here that does not exist here. Or even worse, a bug here in the release version that does not exist in the debug. So I kind of don't like this, but it is an option. For now, I'll just delete this and leave it like that because it's more beautiful this way okay so this is pretty much it this is what i had for you today ended up talking a lot but i think it's a great overview of what i did and um, this is again a way to get the atlas and split that and if you don't believe me that this single tile originated from the tile map what we can do here is to just do Bind the tile map instead. I do have a bunch of other textures commented here. This main file is huge and it does have a bunch of test stuff. Uh, I might do a game in order to test everything because that's better, right? Yeah, well, we'll see. So you can see here that if I don't do that, they have the entire texture, right? So this is the entire atlas. And then the split the image splits that into a bunch of different smaller images that we can access and that's very good let's try to get the bar the, this barrel as the last thing here this one right here let me try so i need to count and this is boring uh, but i already know that this is on the column number nine i believe so i need to subtract two here so let me go ahead here, not a timer. Let's put six in the column and the line. I believe it is one of the last ones. So this is the last column. This is the 11 and this is a 10, right? Uh, so this is actually this this column right here is the the twelfth, and the index of the, of this 
is of course 11 because this is how programming works right so this is 10 probably so let's put 10 here run this yay we have it <laughs> see it is working the indexing is working just fine and now i have a flying barrel very cool very nice so that's it for this video the next one again as i said let me go back to the princess because I like her more than this. Great. So the next video, I'm probably going to be showing you the tile map class. The tile map class is the other way around because this time this update was all about splitting an image into separate images. The other video, the next one, will be about getting a bunch of separate images and combining them into a single one. Not an image itself actually it will combine them at least in this implementation that i'm writing here it will combine them into an image atlas will that will be very similar believe it or not to this that we tried to split apart it will be very similar to this we are we will be building in the next video an atlas like that it will be one dimensional because it's easier to do it uh, but it will be an atlas similar to this and then it will have a mesh remember that we have meshes right so the engine supports meshes and we can make a good use of it by having a mesh with a bunch of quads per uh tile that way we can make tile maps right and it handle everything if a single draw call it will be super fast super optimized and so on so this is the idea for the next video it is already on the works as i said i almost forgot to to record this one so you can see there's a lot new here i'm not gonna spoil but this will be the subject of the next video so thanks for watching this one and i see you in the next one bye